Hi, I'm Tzachi from Melanox Technologies. Actually, I started presenting this topic a year ago. Since then, we've made some uh, work uh, on the open source community. Uh, we had discussions with the community. We update, updated the proposal. So here I am again uh, presenting the updated uh, proposal. So <clears throat> I'll start off with uh, presenting what is the motivation, what actually we would like to propose here. Uh, which uh, common address patterns we see uh, for non-contiguous uh, memory. Um, then I'll show how it applies to uh, verbs, how we see a great match uh, into verbs and uh, into reusing an existing verbs object. Uh, then I'll continue with the API proposal and uh, I'll finish off with some examples. So basically, what is the goal? Why, why do we need this? So we talked a lot about zero copy, zero copy. It's very important. Uh, it saves CPU cycles, it uh, improves latency, it improves bandwidth eventually. Uh, we save on uh, memory bus bandwidth, but actually how we can achieve it if our uh, data originally is scattered? Um, so there's many applications that uh, have the data uh, scattered. Uh, there are some examples here, like uh, boundary exchange example uh, from HPC. With vector uh, graphics, we see interleaved uh, vertex data, which is very common. And uh, matrix operations uh, with the scientific applications. Um, also, another, another point is that uh, with RDMA, when you do RDMA read or write, <coughs> IBTA defines the RDMA operations with a single VA, virtual address. So you can always target a single virtual address. You cannot uh, use a, a scatter gather of uh, virtual addresses uh, in order to perform RDMA. So also, if I need to RDMA in a single transaction into a non-contiguous virtual memory, I have an issue. Today I need to do it with multiple RDMA operations. Um, so basically what we see is that there is an a, a great need for a, a way to describe non-contiguous memory, define it as a, a layout or a stencil, and use it on any of my objects, because usually I would have such a pattern uh, repeating, because I have the same objects. So here is, uh, to start off immediately, uh, a a very simple example is a matrix multiplexion. So uh, we can see here, if I use the pointer here. Yes, yeah, so we can see here that uh, we need to take this vector and this vector. And the vector matrix B is non-contiguous in memory because usually this is the way it is placed in memory. So actually, if we want to do this multiplexion and build uh, the cell number 00, zero on matrix C, we need a way to basically send this data uh, into remote uh, node. And the remote uh, send is basically for doing that in a scale to distribute the calculation. For example, if my use case is to do this each uh, vector uh, multiplexion in different node to distribute the load of the calculation, then I need to now send all those uh, lines, rows and columns uh, to different nodes. So basically, if I would like to send uh, columns of B, I will, today I will basically perform copy. <coughs> so uh, as I mentioned, today either I build scatter gather lists. So we can see here that if I need to send this data, I will build uh, lots of scatter gather entries. It might be even non-efficient and it might end up that I should do uh, copies because using multiple uh, scatter gather entries for small uh, data is also inefficient. So uh, this is one solution and uh, the other solution is, as I mentioned, is the user level packing. And as we can see in this example here, uh, this example shows that I would like to pass data from the source here, which has this matrix, to the destination here in this uh, structure. Because this is just sub, sub of the big matrix that resides on this, the destination node. 
So uh, today I would essentially do a copy, pack the data, send it over the wire, and then unpack and copy to my destination uh, metrics. So we can see here basically that across the network we see two copies, one on the sender side and for packing, and one on the receiver side for unpacking. And once again, if I have multiple such objects, I'm doing it all over again for any repeating object. So uh, what is the solution? How we, see, how, how we would like to lay out uh, the API? So basically, um, we would like to, the devices to be aware of this uh, non-contiguous structure, non-virtually contiguous structure, as we made the devices aware of virtual memory uh, in order to perform RDMA, we do pre-registration, we do on-demand paging to learn the translation between physic virtual to physical, but eventually the devices are aware uh, of the virtual memory, so we would like to go one step further and also let the devices be aware of non-contiguous virtual memory and more uh, uh, complex memory layout. <coughs> So we would like to register such a pattern, and then we would like to use it like a stencil. So we register these patterns once, and then we can use it across many uh, data, many objects with the same uh, structure. Uh, so basically, for send operation, either send or, or RDMA uh, write, basically the devices would do a DMA, local DMA read, from the memory bus, from this non-contiguous memory, will uh, have the structure of the memory pre-registered. Uh, so they use this uh, knowledge of the stencil to take the data from the local memory, to DMA the data from the local memory, uh, which is a non-contiguous. And same for the receiving side, either um, the target of RDMA write or, or the send. Um, the data will be DMA writeed into the memory according to the stencil. Okay, uh, another, uh, another point is um, we need the devices to be, aware, as mentioned, we need the devices to be aware of the non-contiguous memory, and um, this requires some hardware. So we need to identify which address patterns are common, which are interesting, and what we see is that uh, mainly there are three types. Uh, there's the composite. Composite, uh, as you see in, in the example here, um, I simply have just different blocks, non-contiguous virtual blocks, the, the green, purple, and red, and uh, those can be uh, uh, such three areas that can repeat with different data, but anyhow, these, are, th these don't have any pattern, they are just simply uh, areas of non-contiguous virtual memory that I would like to send or receive. So this is one type, and we can see here that if we could pack them through the device into this structure, it would be uh, virtually, virtually contiguous. Uh, the other, the other uh, type is strided data. Strided data is something very typical to matrix where uh, I have a pattern, I have a fixed size of the sale, I have a fix, fixed stride between each cell, which is basically uh, the row size. Uh, so this is another, uh, another type. And again, here I, can, I should be able to describe each memory with a different scatter gather. Here, it would be a killer. I need to, to let the hardware uh, learn the pattern and basically uh, identify each one of those cells independently. Uh, the third type is interleaved data, and interleaved data is data where I repeatedly, repeatedly take uh, cells from each different uh, data source. So, and in this example, I have two metrics, and I would like basically to send the cells from each matrix uh, in interleaved way. So, looking at applications, we've learned that uh, these three are, are the main. Uh, basic uh, common uh, memory structures, and of course you can build uh, more memory structures using those, uh, those semantics. <coughs> okay, taking it uh, next level to the API. 
So basically, the API outline goes like this. Um, we would like to adapt the uh, good old uh, IBV memory region, the existing verbs, verb object that describe the memory region. Um, we would like this uh, memory region, which represents the, the key address and length of the area, to be aware and to be able to uh, encompass also a non-virtually contiguous memory. Um, it will have those three types that I mentioned, uh, the composite, strided, and the interleaved. Uh, we will add also API capabilities, so each hardware vendor can report what it can support. Um, how would be the completion semantics for such registration? Um, how we can change uh, the memory registration, update it, and uh, a short code example. Um, so as I mentioned, we would like to reuse the IBVMR, the existing object. So basically, we use the existing IBV regmr, same API as, as usual. But in this case, um, the MR points to what IBTA calls uh, ZBVA, zero-based virtual address, because now uh, the address that this MR points to is basically uh, referred to the start of this virtual object. I'm creating a virtual contiguous object, and this uh, address here describes basically the offset from the start of such an object. Um, as you can see, we are passing here zero as the address uh, because we still don't have the actual uh, data pointed. We will use that uh, data in the following uh, way, which is described here. So we have added this verb, IBV MR set layout scatter gather. That's for the composite. So as you can see here, we, we receive the MR of the actual data. So assuming the user registered his metrics, his whole data, and it has an MR, a separate MR for that data, we now build on top of that MR uh, the, the uh, virtually uh, non-contiguous MR. So um, I'll describe the slides and the, the flags on the next slide. It will be easier with the example. So um, the other object that, uh, the other function that we've added is the uh, set layout interleaved. So basically this uh, function can serve both interleaved and strided. So basically we've added two uh, verb calls, one for the composite with the scatter gather and one for the interleaved. Um, <coughs> we can see in the interleaved that we have the MR layout interleaved. Um, so basically we use this structure to describe uh, the interleaved data. So uh, in high level, the first datum is basically the one that represents the first object. Uh, num repeated is basically how many repetition we would like to take from that first object because as we've seen with the interleaved case, we may have multiple such matrices so we can define that we are taking multiple objects from each matrix at each iteration. So we can say we take two from this uh, yeah. matrix and two from that matrix and so on. So this is num repeated. Uh, dimension is basically the dimension of this matrix. This matrix can be 2D, 3D or more. So each dimension has its own uh, interleaved uh, dimension struct that men is mentioned here. And basically on that struct, we, uh, we basically describe each dimension. What is, what is the stride offset, basically the row size, and uh, the datum count, how many such objects we would take from that dimension eventually. So basically, this is the, the general API for describing interleaved um, non-contiguous memory. Um, this is more deep dive about how we would like to represent the capabilities. Um, I wouldn't go on each, wouldn't explain each field here. You can look at it afterwards, and also you can look at the RFC that we've posted on the RDMA uh, mailing list. But anyhow, here we can have capabilities, so each vendor can define if he can support each one of those types: composites, scatter gather, uh, interleaved. Uh, also, how many repetitions, how many dimensions. So uh, we try to articulate the capabilities 
so uh, it will be easier to implement with the different hardwares. Um, and as always, this API, as other verbs, is extendable, so each one can uh, add uh, its own unique uh, features. Now, uh, I would like to uh, spare a minute to talk about how you basically register, how the semantics of registering such a, a memory layout. Uh, and we basically support two, two modes of registration. One is the blocking mode, and, none in, and the second is the non-blocking mode. So with the blocking mode, if you recall the IBVMR set layout scatter gather or, or interleaved, those, meth those methods, those verbs that we've added to register this memory. So uh, this uh, call can be blocking, which means that when it returns the memory, the key that describes this object is ready to use and uh, registration is done. And, uh, and the other option is basically this function returns immediately. And, I, and the registration is not done, I need to do a, a nec and more operation, a next operation, and then and I'll explain the reasoning. So with a blocking flow here, it's pretty straightforward. I call this uh, set layout, scatter gather or interleaved. Uh, I pass a flag, I, I, don't, I do not pass any flags. This is flag zero, that means that this call is blocking. So whenever it returns, the MR is usable with my uh, new, uh, virtually contiguous object. Um, and basically I can use this object uh, on any QP. Of course, on the same protection domain, but I can use this uh, memory key on any uh, QP because registration is done. But uh, if I would like to do it asynchronously to do this like in data path or more efficiently, then basically I pass this flag, set layout with post uh, work request. So that means that in order to actually perform the registration, I need to uh, basically call post send. And this registration is being done in data path through a, a Wookie, a work request element. So uh, basically the usage here, the usage module here is that I'm doing this operation in data path. So here I'm just setting the stage, uh, defining what is the structure of the memory, but not actually registering this uh, to the adapter. And on data path I can do uh, post send post this uh, bind operation and immediately follow with the Wookie that says send the data or RDMA the data and I can reference this MR. So assuming QP semantics uh, hold and uh, the Wookie of the bind would be completed after, before the Wookie of the send or, or write operation, uh, the semantic works. So as mentioned here, this call returns immediately, it's asynchronous, and uh, the binding is usable immediately on the same QP, because the semantics of ordering uh, is that those Wookies, the bind and the send, are on the same QP. So the semantics here is that if I use this on the same QP, I'm, I'm fine and, and, and don't need to block. Obviously I can use this amount on different uh, QPs once I get the completion for the bind operation. But if I use it on the same QP, I don't need to wait for the completion of the bind. <coughs> um, here we can see a typical uh, usage flow. So uh, basically, I uh, call regmr. I register this uh, or create this non-contiguous empty MR. I prepare it. Then I uh, set the stage for calling the set layout interleaved or scatter gather. In this example, we, we use the interleaved. Um, so we are uh, defining the address, the actual address, uh, virtual address. Uh, in this example, this is a matrix. So basically the first object address would be here. So basically it's the address of the matrix plus eight because each object here is eight. Uh, we have the key of that whole matrix that was registered pre-registered before this call. Uh, datum length is basically the length of the object, so it's uh, eight bytes. Uh, in this case, we don't have repetition, so we take one object at each iteration, one, one, and one, because this is a single dimension. Uh, so we just walk through the lines of the matrix, the rows. Uh, num of dimension is one, and um, offset stride is 
how much, uh, how many bytes the hardware needs to jump for getting the next element. Obviously, this is the row size, 64. Uh, how many elements would eventually be in the virtual contiguous memory? That's uh, eight. This is the number of rows. If we would like to take the whole rows from that uh, matrix. And then we call the set layout interleaved eventually because flags is uh, zero. I'm not asking for non-blocking. This is blocking. So once this call returns, I have a key that, be, that from the device perspective uh, illustrate this uh, this uh, vector as a device virtually contiguous memory. And now it can be uh, used for uh, I.O. operation. In this example, uh, we do a send. So uh, in order to do the send, we prepare the work request, the IBV send work request element. So uh, we set the scatter gather here. Address is zero because uh, I would like to start, as I said, now this key that I'm putting here basically described this uh, memory as device virtually contiguous. So offset zero means I'm starting for the first element. Uh, length is, uh, of course, the size of the element, double size of rows, key I mentioned, and then I do a post send. So uh, this should be pretty straightforward. Uh, and again, this is simple for uh, the simple uh, memory structure. Of course, if we use uh, more complex memory structures, it becomes uh, more tricky, like, like in this example. So in this example, we, we have uh, two uh, separate uh, matrices. Oh, each one of them is uh, of two dimension, which means that I'm, I'm building, a, 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 the resulting element will be one dimension. So uh, here we can see that we are preparing two layouts. Uh, one of them describes this is the details of the first matrix, address, key, and, uh, and element length. Here in this example, this is 512 bytes. In this example, it's eight bytes. So we can see here, we are preparing uh, address, key, and length of uh, each element here, and uh, of course, location. Again, those keys, these one and this one were pre-registered. Once the user registers the memory for those uh, matrix uh, locations. Um, then, there's no repetitions here. I'm taking, uh, because here I have single, this is single dimension, this is single dimension, single dimension per layout here. So repetition is zero, dimension is zero. Uh, this is again the size of a row because each element here is 512 uh, the, and we have six uh, columns. So the size of the row is uh, 3072 uh, bytes. And uh, how many elements? 100, because I have 100 rows here. And uh, again, same similar here. So the end result will be an object that looks like this. Each unique block here is 520, because it's 512 from this guy, and eight bytes uh, from this guy. So the result is such an interleaved pattern. Again, I, res I, end, I end up with having in my hand a key to this device virtually contiguous uh, memory. <clears throat> um, this is uh, to cover the case where I have multiple dimensions. So uh, in, this is pretty simple because here I have only two dimensions for, for the 3D uh, matrix. Why two dimensions? Because uh, the, resulting, uh, the resulting object would be a two dimension. So here again, I start off with setting the address of the matrix, and then I defined the jumps for each direction, for each dimension. As you see, I take an object from each dimension, once at a time, and I have two dimensions, and I define the hardware how to jump from each uh, object depending on the dimension. Uh, the last is a non-uniform repetition example. Mr. X here. Uh, so in this case, we can see that we have three separate uh, layouts. Uh, each layout is a, in, with different structures. And this example is unique in, in the sense of showing what is repeat, how we use it. So in this case, the resulting uh, object that I would like to have is an object that has three elements from the red, mat uh, the red matrix, three from the green, and uh, and two from the blue. 
So how, how basically I do that? Uh, we can see here how we describe each uh, layout. In, the, in all cases, the length is four. Uh, each uh, cell size is four. We can see here that the jumps here are uh, by cell uh, size, which is four. Um, the num of repetition, how many uh, objects or cells I take from each layout. So as, I, as, as we talked, uh, three is the number here, the number of elements I'm taking from uh, this matrix in each repetition. Then I take three uh, from the green, and then I take uh, two from the uh, blue. Uh, count is eventually how many elements I'm taking from each one of them. So it's obviously the num of repetitions, double the num of uh, cycles. Here you can see I have six cycles. One, two, three, and three more. So it's basically 18 for the red and, uh, and the green, and uh, 12 for the blue, because here I I'm taking two each cycle. And uh, stride size, as before, that's the size of the row. So here it's two, uh, four, and five. So eventually I end up having such an interleaved object with varying size of elements from each layout. So uh, basically, uh, after this, we can see the main use cases for each one of the uh, memory patterns descriptions. OK, so getting to the summary. Um, Really, to do zero copy, we see that there is a great need to, to have uh, devices be aware of more, uh, more uh, complex virtual uh, memory patterns, uh, in addition, obviously, to what we have today, which is uh, more straightforward. Um, we would like also to define a, a semantic where we define the layout once, as using it as a stencil, so it's more efficient because mainly our uh, objects uh, repeat themselves. Um, for the device, those objects would become contiguous, so it's uh, very efficient. And uh, as we saw, the main benefits are zero, zero copy, uh, using a single, eventually single uh, virtual device address uh, for uh, DMA oper RDMA operations. Uh, no need to mess with the many scatter gather lists or with the, as, as we saw with patterns and repeating uh, structures, it's practically unusable. You have to do packing and copy. And API-wise, we see it as a natural fit for the good old existing uh, verb object, the IBVMR. So it can be used uh, also with existing uh, verbs uh, that already manage the ML. Questions? First, first question, um, does, can this uh, scatter gather list be target for atomic operation? Or is, it, is there a limitation? So for atomic operations, it depends. If you're talking about the standard atomics, it's, uh, it's a 64-bit uh, destination. And so uh, yes, you can use it for atomic, but it's for 64-bit uh, operation, so you would like to to have more different locations for this 64 bit. I mean, you need to uh, scatter this 64 bit and it will not be atomic anymore, right? So it cannot be. Uh, it, it depends. Are you talking about PCI atomics? Or are you talking about. Because uh, obviously, with PCI atomics, it won't. It won't, but with. Uh, even with uh, non PCI atomic, atomic need to be aligned to the. The, atom, the address need to be aligned to 64-bit address. Okay, so I was assuming you were talking other. about making that aligned. I mean, you have to describe the first byte, the second byte, so it would be aligned in your in original uh, memory layout. I mean, um, the 64-bit uh, cannot be split, right, over uh, several uh, memory regions. So, again, uh, there's standard atomics, which is uh, defined in the IBTA spec in its 64 bit. And we've introduced uh, long ago support for extended atomics, where you can support uh, atomics operation on uh, 250, I think it's 255 byte in length. So, you can also perform atomic operations on larger data sizes. So, for them, it might be more usable. 
Okay. Uh, second question is, is there a, can each element be a scatter gather list by itself? Is there a... You mean after you prepare this uh, non-contiguous MR, you, can, you are asking if you can use it in a scatter yes. gather? For yes, absolutely. Yes. Yes. And That's why we, we like the use of IBVMR, because now you can use the same object and we don't need for those, op uh, okay. let's but say, you can let's call it, them legacy but you, operations. But, uh, but how many layers? Is it infinite number? Is there a limitation by the harnik? <coughs> Basically, the number of scatter gathers that you can use per work request element is defined by the work request element size. So no, I mean each element can be a scatter gather list by itself. Each one of the, if you, you have three uh, elements in your scatter gather list. That's, that's for uh, the composite side or? No, side? Let's take the um, simple, uh, let's say you have a, a memory region which is made out of three uh, okay. elements, right? That's the composite, okay. Okay, mm -hmm. and uh, each element by itself can be made of three. Uh, right. Oh, you mean what would be the limitation on the depth of those yes. interactions? Yes. So this is actually something we explore through the capabilities. Okay. Um, I don't recall the number we support today. I can check out, but this is something we report on the IBV device site on the capabilities. Okay. And uh, um, the, in the non-blocking uh, flow, the verbs are, um, are, user, are user mode only, so no need for system call. This is the, the intent is that <coughs> this registration is uh, done on fast path. Yes. yes, yes, because it's now a work request element. So basically it's like same as send and receive that performs but kernel bypass and talk to the hardware directly, post the work request and do the doorbell. Okay. So and same the, for the and, the and the API that prepares the scatter gather list is, not, is uh, user mode, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's, okay. Uh, that's the goal here, yeah. Okay. Yeah, basically the API for the non-blocking is that you prepare the data structures, so once you do the post send, the, uh, the library of the vendor itself uh, can know how to build the work request element from this call uh, once you do this, you build the Wookie. Okay. Sixteen. I, I think so, but, but we can check. Uh, 